Hi everyone, thank you for joining me today. This is part three of my three-part series on using the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill freestyle pens. This is called Stencil Stamp and Sketch Oh My, and today we're going to be talking about handwriting or sketching. Um, also, I'm going to take a look at tracing and some other things, and I'll give you some tips and tricks along the way. I'm Stephanie. I go by StampJG here on YouTube and at my blog at StampJG.com, and I like to make detailed tool and product demonstration videos to help all of us be more creative with the tools and products that we have. These are the We Are Memory Keepers freestyle pens and they are a heat pen that make it easy to add foil to our projects in just the places that we want. We don't have to rely anymore on feeding things through a laminator or putting things in a die cut machine, an electronic die cut machine. We can actually write on um, planners and, and wood and um, cards and other things that all of us crafters like to write on. The Wear Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pens currently come in four different pen tips and they're each individual and they work off of USB power. So you plug it into a USB power source that is either plugged into a wall or as I know you guys have seen that I use a cell phone adapter that you charge the cell phone adapter and then you plug your heat tool into this and this is plenty of power for using a heat tool for quite a while. The four pen tips are fine, standard, broad, and the new addition to the family is the chisel or uh, calligraphy tip and it is a more of a slightly flat broader point that you can use to um, make thick and thin lines when you're handwriting. I will show each of these up close and I will show an example of each of these with foil so that you can see what it looks like. For the most part today I am working on my We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Magnetic Mat. It is a metal board, a very thin metal board that comes with four magnets two long ones and two short ones and these help to hold down foil and your project and keep the foil tight so that you don't um, wrinkle it as much and that's one of the things with the foil is you want to keep it from wrinkling um, so that you can have a smooth application on your project. The other thing I like about the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill magnetic mat is it's perfectly smooth. There's nothing these lines are etched into it somehow so that there is no, you can't feel them in any way, shape, or form. So it's not going to interfere with transferring foil to a project by going over bumps. In addition, I will probably be using some tape. I do like the We Are Memory Keepers foil quill um, tape. It is like a, very much like a washi tape. It's a maybe slightly more of a plastic feel and it releases very very cleanly from both the project and the foil when you pull it back on itself at a 45 degree angle or a, a, a steep angle and it releases very nicely and I like using this tape as you can see I've used a bunch of it. So let's take a look at the pen points and see what each of the different widths produce when you use them. So to show what different points look like when you use them on a project, I have two pieces of cardstock here. I have a just a plain white piece and a piece of black cardstock. And I'm going to put them on my magnetic mat. And I have a sheet of We Are Memory Keepers heat activated gold foil. These come in many different sizes. You can buy four by six sheets, which is what this is. It comes in a pack of, I believe, 20, I think. There's different, lots of different colors. They have a great variety of colors. And it also is sold in 12 inch rolls and 12 inch cut sheets. So you can get this in any size that fits your, that fits your style. And I am just going to lay this down in the middle of my project for now. I can move it later if I need to. And I'm going to start when I hold it down by starting with the long ends of the magnet. And I'm just going to put it down. Then I'm going to take the second magnet 
and I'm going to put it down towards the end and kind of drag it over before letting go. And this is going to hold my project in place and my foil in place at the same time. I can add these little magnets at top and bottom. And if you have additional magnets and you want to use them, you can do that as well. So let's begin with the pink pen, which is the finest point. And I have it plugged in and heating up for at least five minutes. And I'm just simply going to make a line on each of the white and the black paper. And it's probably not going to be straight. This is very fine. Next, I am going to take the green or aqua colored pen. This is the standard point. And I'm also going to draw lines. And again, they're not straight. I could use a ruler. I'm going to move on to the dark blue tip or the broad tip. I'm just going to use B for broad. I'm not going to be able to write all that out. And then finally, I'm going to move on to the dark pink tip, which is the chisel point or the calligraphy tip. And I will do points going the long way here and points going more of the broad way. And then I'm going to do a, a line doing at a 45 degree angle. Which is how calligraphy generally is. And I'm just going to put a big C for calligraphy or Cal. So let's see what this looks like. And I will bring you in closer. So here is a very close up look at each of the lines. On white. And then here they are. On black. And I used gold foil for this. The calligraphy point reminds me very much of a calligraphy marker where it's um, maybe the edges are a little rounded rather than one of those uh, metal pen tips that are very, very, very sharp or, you know, flat, but have a very sharp edge on them. So you get kind of a, you can get thick and thin with them depending upon how you hold the pen tip. And the fine point is almost needle fine. It's very, very narrow and it feels um, 
scratchier to work with because it's so fine. The broad point is the smoothest of them all because it's got a wider area on it. But as you can see, if you um, use any of these, what they might look like when you try to when you want to use them on a project. So in some cases, it might be a good idea to do a test with whatever pens that you have so that you know which width you want to use. The calligraphy pen is more of a specialty pen for people who do hand lettering um, and are good with that. As you can tell, I am not a hand letterer, so or I'm not very good at sketching. But let's try playing with this as a sketching tool. To start off with, I am going to use the standard or regular point We Are Memory Keepers foil quill pen. You can tell I've got it powered up because the little light is on. I'm using again a cell phone adapter over here. And I'm working on the We Are Memory Keepers magnetic mat. I've got a sheet of 4x6 foil from We Are Memory Keepers and these are very convenient size especially if you're a card maker. And to start off with I'm going to use a piece of black cardstock. I'm hoping maybe you would be able to see this well on camera. So I'm just going to place the cardstock on my mat. I'm going to put a piece of foil down on top and then I'm going to go ahead and set my magnets. I like to do the same side first. So for example, I'm going to do the long side and I'm just going to put it down. Then I'm going to do the other long side directly across and it's actually, you kind of want to scoot it just a little bit and then I want to do my sides. And I do this to minimize wrinkles. That's really the only only reason why. Um, if it's more convenient for you to do it a different way, go for it. So our space is ready to work with. Now the We Are Memory Keepers foil is a heat activated foil. So you don't necessarily need pressure. You just need to have heat, which this little medium sizer tip is is now heat up. I've had it heating for at least five minutes. And so this makes it easy to go ahead and add foil to our project underneath the foil activated side. So if I just go ahead and draw or sketch, I can go ahead and add foil to my project. Now I'm also moving a little too fast, so I'm going to go a little bit slower and this helps minimize wrinkles and shakiness. And you can hatch to fill in an area if you want. You can draw lines. You can Hand right. Anywhere on here. This makes it easy to go ahead and maybe sign. I need to write slower than this, but this is if I were going to sign something. makes it easy to put a date on something. And if you were really good, and I'm not, I, I'm not a, a letterer, I don't have the patience to practice, I know that I could get better, you could go ahead and do hand lettering and make this, the thicks and thins look really well by going over it. And so people who hand letter probably could use this just as it is. I've got another tip and trick. If, like me, you don't aren't great at hand lettering. But let's take a look at what we got here. Tell my foil transferred. 
and I've got bright shiny foil on my project. I'm going to flip this over because it's a practice sheet and then I'm going to show something else that you can do if you're not a letterer. I have gone ahead off camera and I have printed some items off the computer. I took some fonts that I liked, set them up on a document and just printed several of these from my word program and it's on copy paper. Unfortunately, copy paper um, on top of foil doesn't transfer the heat well enough to really trace it. If you let your pen heat up really well and go very slow, you might be able to get it without sketchiness. I have tried lots of different things and you it works a little bit just to, to directly go from tracing this onto the foil and having it land on your project well. More often than not, it kind of comes off sketchy, hit and miss. But what I've decided to do is, and off camera again, I went out and took a couple of different ways of doing this. First of all, if you hand write or hand letter, you can actually draw on your sheet, your foil sheet, with a Sharpie marker. Again, if I were a letterer, this would have looked pretty. <laughs> it's, the, it's just my handwriting. The other thing that I found I could do is if I take my printed item that kind of gives me an outline of what I want to do and a sheet of graphite paper and put it underneath, I came up with a decent enough trace. You can barely see it right here. A decent enough trace that I could actually handwrite over this or trace over that. So if I put this down and I'm going to trace this best year ever right in the middle of my cardstock. And one of the things that you kind of would like to do when you're putting your your magnetic strips down is to get your project and your foil down at the same time so neither one of them move. And then, so this is what I'm going to be tracing. And I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. You can kind of see it on camera. Let me zoom in a little bit. And this was done, and you can see it's smudging a little bit. This was done with the graphite. I'm going to go ahead and trace this. Without getting my head in the shot. <laughs> It's a little sketchy and a little uneven um, when you do it without a camera over the back of your head you probably could go slower um, but it lets you know that if you have the ability to draw or to sketch you this is a great way of doing it or you can go ahead and borrow fonts from the internet and come up with something that you like and trace it onto your foil because the foil has a clear carrier sheet between us and the heat activated foil, we can write or draw or trace or do whatever we want on top of it and it will not transfer to our project because it's got a clear sheet on it. The only thing that you don't want to do is dig real hard or to scratch or scrape it. That will ruin the foil underneath. So let's start by drawing some lines. And I'm going to just use 
my grid mat so I'm just gonna draw a line and each time I do this I'm gonna try to make it as flat as possible I could anchor it with two pieces of tape and then pick it up I think might have been a better And now I have lines at every half inch, just by measuring between the lines I had drawn. Now take our card front, decide kind of where we want our project to be. And I'm going to have to line this up straight. I'm going to recommend taping this down to hold it in place once you get it kind of where you want it. Now we can put our magnets down. So I've drawn lines at every half inch on my foil. And now I've lined up my card front so it's straight. And my project is a little more straighter. Now, as you can see, I need practice. That goes without saying. But that's one way I think that might be helpful to line up your project onto your card. Okay, so working with the foil quill freestyle pens, one of the things that we might wanna do is write in our planner. Now I have just taken a random page out of my planner and in order to do this, I am going to take a scrap of foil from something we've already worked with. This is really cool because you can use up all your scraps of foil. And say I want to put something in my planner. I kind of, in this case, would want my scrap of foil to be smaller than the the piece that I'm working on. That way I can see around it to know where I want to go. Now I could also do it here and I can kind of gauge where my edges are. You could cut it down a little bit if you wanted to. Or you could do the trick like we did earlier and draw lines on your foil. In this case I am working on a very small area so I am just going to hold this down and put two little magnets. And what if all I wanted to do on this little planner page is put circles for my to-do list. Now I used the broad point pen and this might be a good chance to use the standard or needle point or fine point pen because it was a little bit too big for me to write in here. But when I peel it up, I have gold in my planner. One of the things that we can also do is to draw onto scrapbook paper or other paper that we like. I am using sheets out of this Truly Grateful pad by Paige Evans and Pink Paisley. It is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pad of paper. Um, it's a six by eight, so that it's a perfect size if you're a card maker, but of course they also have 12 by 12. And a lot of these sheets already have foil in them and it's a copper foil. And I'm going to draw a heart somewhere on my piece of paper because I want a heart 
that is pattern paper but that has pink foil on it. Now of course I'm not going to be able to do anything in here because that, all that foil is gone but I have a piece of area foil up here that I could reuse for my heart shaped item. And if I were smart I might want to draw it out first or trace it. You could get a template or a die cut or something and trace it. I'm going to freehand it which is not always a great pro idea. Let me get a broader pen here. And sometimes a broader Sharpie that works is better than the fine point that doesn't work. That's dried out. I love my Sharpies. Uh, and you do not need to use any pressure with this at all. The heat and the pen tip are going to do all the work for you. So you don't have to be concerned about that. And I have a wrinkle and you can see what happens when it wrinkles. It kind of gets in the way. But what if Just wanted a cute heart. And if you are into sketching or doodling, this is going to be fun because you could outline and then fill in with different pen widths. And that way I have this cute little heart that I can cut out. Use on my scrapbook page, use it in my planner. Or anything so I have one heart Let's see if I wanted to draw another heart heart is not shaped the way I want it to be so I'm gonna go outside my lines at this case but at least I had a starting point Now I have a couple of hand foiled hearts that I can use on any of my projects. But what if we wanted to try to add foil to a piece of patterned cardstock that we didn't trace? Here's where if you have a light box you might be able to trace foil onto patterned paper. So let me show you. I personally do not have a light box. I did years ago. Um, I did not keep it. And I know there are bright light pads and bright pads and all kinds of things out on the market now. So I'm guessing those would all work. Here is an option um, that's inexpensive if you don't have those. I am starting off with a clear box tray. I bought a 8.5 by 11 box tray from Michaels. Normally they come like this here and they have a piece of cardboard in the back. It's just an, an acrylic tray. They're slightly fragile and they will melt. If you get this onto it, it will melt the plastic. Just saying. So once I have something clear or if you had a square of glass that you propped up on something. Once you have something clear and can put a light underneath it, maybe we could trace foil onto pattern paper. One of the things that can work pretty well for that is the flash on our cell phone. Put my cell phone down and the flash is on put it over my project and try to see through here to trace it. Cardstock is actually pretty heavy. This works out really well with lighter weight cardstock. So I tried something else. I bought a puck light from Amazon and I'm not going to shine this in your eyes. It, this one happens to be extraordinarily bright. Um, it's an LED 
puck light. It's powered by three AA batteries, three AAA batteries, and this gives off a boatload of light. So I'm going to stick this under here and turn it on. You can kind of see it underneath here. And if I put my project down, I can see. Let me try turning off some lights. Oh, there you go. You can kind of see now. Let me turn off another light. And turn off all the lights. Okay. So you can see here that I can see through the foil to my pattern paper. So this is heat activated foil. I am going to keep my pen moving because I don't want to melt the plastic underneath it, but I think the cardstock will give me just enough just enough protection from melting it. But I'm going to keep my pen moving and I'm going to trace this flower in gold. Um, actually, this is copper foil. It's hard for me to see when I'm not directly over it, but this would be no problem at home. And I'm kind of holding the foil in place with this hand because I did not tape it down. But you can cut your foil smaller than your project and be able to tape it on all sides and hold it down well. I can add extra lines if I want to. And I'm going to shut off my puck light and get it out of here. It is extraordinarily bright. And if you have one of these in your closet, these little closet lights or puck lights or whatever, they're great. Um, this particular one, I'm just going to show you. I'll link it below because I'm actually pretty happy with it. It has a magnet on the back, and it comes with a magnetic disc that you could adhere somewhere that this could come on and off. It's got a little loop, so if you wanted it to hang over something, I don't know, it's kind of a cute little, cute little thing. Tracing. Whoops, I was off a little bit. Not bad for a first try. But if you get right over it with your head, you can see it clearly to trace over it. And the only other, um, only other suggestion I have is to try to stay inside the lines when you're tracing and that might actually turn out better. So that's kind of just a little experiment here with a homemade light box and a piece of patterned paper that I wanted to add my own foil to. So here are just a couple of the ways that we have used the We Are Memory Keepers Foil Quill Freestyle Pens to create hand-foiled, hand-drawn elements for our cards and planners. There are so many more ways to use these tools, but I just was hoping to give a couple of tips and tricks on working with them. Please, if you have any tips and tricks of working with the freestyle pens, please leave them in the comments below for everybody so we can all share the tips and tricks and learn how to use these tools better. We can write directly into our planner with this. We can trace scrapbook items with the foil quill pens and handwrite and sketch freely. There are just any number of ways to use these. So I want to thank you again for joining me. I had a lot of fun and again if you leave some tips and tricks below that would be great. I would sure love if you would like, subscribe, or share this with your friends and I hope to see you in a video real soon. Bye!